Argentina consumer prices rose to over 53% in 2019. This is the biggest increase in 28 years, marking a major challenge for the new administration of President Alberto Fernandez, who has set economic growth as a priority. Economists have also predicted that inflation would ease in 2020 at a still high 42.2%. Argentina's economic crisis, along with increased poverty and unemployment, helped knock conservative former President Mauricio Macri out of office last October. Dozens of Bolivian police officers gathered near the Mexican embassy in La Paz. This amidst a diplomatic standoff between the two Latin American nations over offers of asylum to members of former president Evo Morales' government. Reportedly, the officers left the scene once authorities determined there was no security threat. Mexico says Bolivian authorities have harassed its diplomatic staff in a row, centering on the Mexican government's decision to grant asylum to nine people. Interim President Jimmy Inez took power last month when long-serving leader Evo Morales resigned and fled to Mexico City. Venezuela opposition leader Juan Guaido denounced an attack on his allies and led a parliamentary session in a Caracas suburb. This after armed, armed civilians attacked a convoy of vehicles carrying opposition politicians to Congress, backing the recent efforts under President Nicolas Maduro to bar Guaido from presiding over Parliament. Reportedly, four opposition politicians were in the vehicles and no one was injured. Human Rights Watch has raised an alert on a number of countries in Latin America for reported human rights abuse. Among the countries is insecurity in Mexico, the alleged ousting of President Evo Morales from Bolivia and violent anti-government protests in Chile. Human Rights Watch director slammed security in Mexico as a complete failure. The group also hit out at the political deadlock in Bolivia that resulted in the resignation of former President Evo Morales. Human Rights Watch also cast a spotlight on unrest in Chile amidst anti-government protests. Jordan's King Abdullah was welcomed by French President Emmanuel Macron at the Elysee Palace. The two leaders are scheduled to hold talks later in the evening. Earlier in the day, King Abdullah addressed the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Last February, France announced it would provide 1 billion euros to Jordan in the form of loans and grants over the next four years. Hours after outgoing president of Guatemala, Jimmy Morales, stepped down. He was sworn in as a lawmaker of the Central American Parliament. This to seek immunity from prosecution. With the help of riot police, Morales and his former vice president, Rafael Cabrera, were able to enter the Central American Parliament and take their oath to office along with 20 other new local deputies. This provoked the people of Guatemala onto the streets. Protesters yelling murderer and let off a loud firework as he tried to reach a hotel. Moments later, he was struck by a plastic object and eggs. Scuffles broke out between protesters and security forces in Beirut as demonstrators rallied against earlier arrests of protesters. Lebanese security forces arrested 59 people following clashes overnight outside the central bank. Angry protesters took to the streets to vent their fury against the country's ruling elite and the worsening financial crisis. They rallied outside the central bank in the bustling Hamrat neighborhood, denouncing the bank governor and policies they say have only deepened the country's financial woes. Iraqi protesters organized their first color festival, waving colored smoke flares in the holy city of Najaf in support of the peaceful demonstrations and to reject the 
re-election of Adel Abdel Mahdi as the Prime Minister. NATO performed a practice drill of interceptions of aircraft in Allied airspace with pilots from Britain, France and Denmark taking to the air for close encounters at speeds of 900 km per hour. Violations of NATO airspace over the Baltics have fallen since Moscow's annexation of Crimea in 2014, but air activity on Allied borders remains constant as jets fly from the Russian mainland across the Baltic Sea to Kaliningrad. During the simulations, NATO pilots carrying air-to-air -air missiles took turns to simulate the interception of a Belgian Air Force transporter playing the role of a Russian plane en route to Lithuania, performing visual inspections of the aircraft's status. Italian police arrested 94 people in three dawn raids as part of an investigation into an alleged mafia scam that defrauded European Union agriculture funds of millions of euros. Prosecutors said they believed the fraud was orchestrated by two mafia clans in eastern Sicily who obtained at least 5.5 million euros, almost equal to 6.1 million US dollars in EU farm subsidies for land they did not own between 2010 and 2017. Amongst those arrested were the heads of the two families, a number of public officials who help farmers apply for EU aid, a local mayor and an accountant. Some 150 companies were also seized as part of the investigation. Amid a recent spike in U.S. anti-Semitic hate crimes, the Museum of Jewish Heritage opened testimony of the Holocaust victims. The curator, Michael Morris, discovered a real-time witness account of the Holocaust drawn in pencil, ink and crayon. According to the curator, the museum stands against and educates about the dangers of anti-Semitism, racism, bigotry. A flying plate of metal killed a man some two kilometers away from the site of a huge chemical plant explosion in northeastern Spain. It was hurled out by the blast and crashed into his apartment building, as confirmed by local authorities after the incident. The explosion in Tarragona also killed a worker at the plant and injured eight others. Local authorities have stated and said that sent flames and plumes of black smoke billowing for kilometers. According to World Meteorological Organization, 2019 was the second hottest year since records began. And the decade that just ended was by far the hottest ever measured on Earth. This decade had eight of the ten hottest years on record and scientists say there is no doubt at all this is man-made climate change. The organization also warned that this year 2020 could face more extreme weather events like the Australian bushfires and fueled by record levels of heat trapping greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Search teams aided by Pakistani troops pulled out 21 more bodies from homes destroyed by this week's avalanches, raising the overall number of dead due to severe weather to 160 for Pakistan and Afghanistan. Rescuers were racing against time to reach scores of people believed to still be trapped inside their homes, buried under avalanches triggered by heavy snowfall in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. With many roads still blocked by snow, authorities were using helicopters to evacuate those injured. The worst affected area was Kashmir's knee. Nilam Valley, where the 21 bodies were retrieved.
In Afghanistan, rains and flash floods have killed 39 people and damaged about 300 homes. Heavy rain in Spinboltak in the district of Kandahar province bordering Pakistan killed six and injured 11 others after a house collapsed during an engagement party. On Monday, residents of the Afghan capital Kabul, where temperatures dropped to minus 15 degrees Celsius, abandoned driving and struggled to get to work on snow-covered roads. A fortunate driver escaped without injury after a car got stuck on a beach and was swamped by the rising tide. The Coast Guard were called to the stranded vehicle in Blackpool on England's west coast but were unable to retrieve the car until the water subsided. Britain has been hit by storm Brendan which started on January 12th this week, prompting the UK's National Weather Service to issue a number of warnings. Anxiety is rising in Rio de Janeiro after more than a week of foul smelling or tasting water coming from taps in dozens of neighborhoods. Residents are hoarding bottled water. People in the metropolitan area have taken to social media to show glasses of water that appears reddish or brownish. There have been rumors denied by officials that the state water utility would cut off supply of water to millions of res residents or that tests have determined the water unfit for consumption. The number of cases of diarrhea gastroenteritis and vomiting in two health clinics of Rio's West Zone have doubled.